Hello everybody, my name is Vladimir Shevchenko. Welcome to the educational program New Technologies for New Physics by National University of Science and Technology, MISIS, from Moscow, Russian Federation, organized together with partner European universities and European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, in Geneva. The program consists of four parts, basics of particle physics, particles and radiation interaction with matter, physics and technologies of particle detectors, and the last part, modern methods of data analysis. Today we will have the first lecture, mostly devoted to overview of the historical development of the field. We will discuss the milestone experiments <coughs> and look how the field came to the position it is now. Uh, the guiding question which we are trying to answer in this uh, field is very old, it goes back to the ancient times. It's a question about the ultimate degrees of freedom. What are the most fundamental bricks, the most fundamental building blocks of matter all the rest of the world is made of? Uh, and in uh, various uh, periods of history of science, uh, various answers <coughs> have been suggested. <coughs> you know the story of four elements, earth, water, air and fire, and the idea that everything uh, is done, is made of these four elements. <coughs> in other uh, theory um, uh, put these building blocks, fundamental building blocks, <coughs> as an, uh, uh, platonic solids, the regular polyhedra, uh, which are only five of them, uh, do exist in three-dimensional space. Not on, not because we haven't found the sixth one, but because there are deep mathematical reasons why there can be only five such objects. Very important step was done by Mendeleev when he invented his periodic table. At the time of um, Mendeleev, all these atoms were considered as elementary. We were known about uh, eight, 80 of them. <coughs> and uh, now the modern uh, version of the fundamental degrees of freedom zoo looks like this picture. It is known, uh, commonly known as the standard model. The world, according to the standard model, consists of particles of two kinds, which are uh, in many respects very different from each other, fermions and bosons. And the fermions, in its, their turn, uh, they are also they are divided into two groups, quarks and leptons. And the rest of the course, uh, you will learn a lot about the properties of these particles, uh, what are the methods of their detection, what are the interactions they participate in. <coughs> but now, it's just important to stress that uh, the part each particle is characterized by a rather small set of numbers. It's its mass, uh, which also can be zero in some cases spin, it's internal angular momentum of the particle, which is just related with their <coughs> nature to be fermion or boson, and charges with respect to various kinds of interaction, which dictate how this particle interacts with other particles. And uh, uh, let's start with the <coughs> overview of historical, uh, main historical steps, which led us to this a nice picture. The story begins in uh, 1896 when um, Henri Becquerel, French physicist, observed uh, the fact that uh, uranium salts <coughs> emit some penetrating radiation without being excited uh, by external source of light. So when they are in the darkness. On the left you can see the uh, famous uh, image of Maltese crossed, cross placed between the plate and the uranium salt. Uh, it was clear that there is uh, some new event, new, phys new, new physical phenomenon, and um, this uh, study, this phenomenon, was later called by radioactivity. Uh, the name was coined by Marie Skolovska Curie, the talented PhD student of Becquerel who continued this work with her husband, Pierre Curie. 
they discovered, besides uh, uranium, two new radioactive elements, polonium and radium. <coughs> Pierre Curie also showed, uh, uh, by clever use of the magnetic field, that some of these uh, products, which uh, elements, uh, radioactive elements emit, they are charged positively, some are charged negatively, and some are not charged, so they are electrically neutral. Later they became known as alpha, beta and gamma radiation, and we will discuss uh, <coughs> what it means in, in modern terms, uh, in, in terms of um, standard model particles. Of course, at the time of their experiments, they didn't know what, uh, what is the nature of this uh, radiation, the different kinds of radiation. Uh, in 1903, <coughs> they all three received the Nobel Prize, and uh, let me mention that Maria Sklovska Curie <coughs> holds a record for being the not only the first woman to uh, who got the Nobel Prize, but the only person who won two Nobel Prizes in two different scientific fields: chemistry and physics. Very important discovery, <coughs> breakthrough discovery came from J. Thomson, uh, the first uh, subatomic particle. Uh, he discovered the electron, which the name came from the Greek word for amber, uh, because as you know from the school course of physics, this uh, experiments with uh, amber and wool are uh, very <coughs> common to demonstrate the uh, phenomenon of natural electricity. <coughs> the main idea which um, Thomson used in his experiment was to check where cathode rays uh, are deflected in electric and magnetic fields or not, and he found that they do deflect it. They, 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 they deflect, and uh, by comparing the deflections <coughs> in these two different kinds of fields in their experiment, you can uh, see the scheme of this experiment on the left. He uh, even managed to measure the electron mass to charge ratio. <coughs> and uh, it was much lower, of course, than that of hydrogen ion, which means that either these uh, particles emitted, which cathode rays consist of, they're either very light or very highly charged. Uh, and uh, another thing which was noticed uh, was that the, this uh, ratio was the same for every cathode made of uh, different materials, while the flow of positive ions emitted by the anode, uh, the mass to charge ratio varied from one anode to another anode, which is not uh, surprising, of course, because they are made of different materials. <coughs> uh, this uh, discovery was also marked by the Nobel Prize in 1906. Uh, let me mention the remarkable fact that uh, another record held by Thompson that nine uh, his PhD students or research assistants got the Nobel Prize later, <coughs> including his son. Uh, the charge of electron <coughs> was measured in 1909 by a famous uh, oil drop experiment by Millikan. Robert Millikan, American physicist, uh, uh, you, you can see the scheme of this experiment uh, here. The guiding idea was to balance the gravitational force acting on the oil uh, drops, droplets which were moving down, and <coughs> the force uh, produced by the electric fields, electric field which are uh, try to move the f uh, these drops upwards. And the balance <coughs> uh, was reached for droplets of different sizes, uh, but what was found, the, the most interesting fact, that uh, the masses and sizes of the droplets were, droplets were distributed continuously. Uh, they were not quantized in, in, modern, in modern language but they are charged at the same time, were integral multiples, rather small, of a certain base value, which was correctly proposed to be negative charge of a single electron, and <coughs> the size of this charge as 1, 0.59, etc., to 10 to the minus 19 Coulomb, uh, was also found by this uh, in this Millikan experiment. Uh, uh, this is less than 1% difference from the modern charge, 
<coughs> well, the accepted value of electron charge, so it's a very remarkable accuracy of the experiment. Uh, and what is also very remarkable that since then, the fact that the charge of electron and all other particles is quantized remain one of the great mystery of fundamental physics. We have mm, many ideas why it should be uh, in this way, but uh, still no a clear proof that this or that idea about quantization of charge uh, is realized in nature. Needless to say that we have no <coughs> any theory which allows to compute the electric charge from the first principles uh, to express it in terms of some other <coughs> physical constants. Uh, the next great name which came to us is um, uh, Ernest Rutherford. Uh, it's interesting that his most famous experiment, gold foil experiment, the so-called, was uh, performed by him after he got Nobel Prize in chemistry for another thing, and <coughs> together with Geiger and Marston. <coughs> the, idea, the idea of the experiment uh, can be seen on this scheme. Uh, he studied the scattering of um, alpha particles, which uh, is in modern language is a <coughs> helium-2 nucleus, uh, on the thin golden foil. And the most interesting fact, which was found, that some fraction of these alpha particles um, were deflected by large angles. Uh, and Rutherford correctly suggested that this is because these particles scatter over some high and compact objects inside the uh, atoms, which we now know are atomic nucleus. And this is uh, this was the first uh, moment when the modern view of atom uh, was born as an object, which consists of compact and heavy center and large. Uh, electron clouds surrounding it. Another important uh, discovery made by Rutherford to be mentioned here was the exponential law of radioactive uh, decay, which is a typical law for <coughs> uh, not only for particles but also for other atomic uh, systems. In 1920, Rutherford postulated uh, their existence of uh, proton, the hydrogen nucleus, and the existence of its neutral partner, the neutron. Another interesting line started in 1859, when German physicist Gustav Kirchhoff asked the following question. Suppose you have an ideal absorber, so somebody which just absorbs all incident radiation, uh, but reflects nothing. When it is in uh, equilibrium with some thermal bath at temperature T, it should emit radiation, of course, to be in equilibrium. So what is the spectrum of this emitted radiation? The question seemed to be not so difficult. However, starting to work it out, physicists realized that um, the problem uh, comes from the short wavelength part of the spectrum uh, treated without any additional assumptions, it led to the so-called ultraviolet catastrophe. Impossibility to be in equilibrium. And uh, the problem stayed until Max Planck solved it in after 40 years, introducing the revolutionary idea of energy quantum. The idea that energy uh, cannot be emitted or absorbed continuously, but only by uh, some quanta proportional to the frequency of radiation with the new coefficient of proportionality, which we now call Planck constant, H, universal for every process in the world, new constant of nature. The Planck spectrum um, is written here on, on, on this slide, and it depends on the temperature and, and uh, the frequency. Of radiation and it in includes this new constant. One can check that at large wavelengths, at short wavelengths, it has correct uh, limiting behavior known before and uh, this was the first 
place where quantum mechanics started its uh, way to uh, the power. Another important theory, uh, with the first example of uh, quantumness, quantum effect in theoretical description, was the Einstein's theory of photoelectric effect, uh, which he published in 1905, and he got Nobel Prize for that work in 1921, and not for relativity theory, by the way, he's most famous for. And for the electric effect is the process when metal being radiated by some incident electromagnetic radiation emits electrons. Naively, since the energy of these electrons came from incident radiation, uh, one could think that more intense the light is, larger the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons should be. However, it is not the case. Uh, the energy depends not on the intensity of light, but the frequency of light, so the color uh, for optical part of the spectrum. And um, moreover, there is a threshold frequency, and for light with a lower frequency than this threshold one, there is no emission at all, regardless of the intensity. Einstein suggested that this quantization uh, idea works not only for energy but for the light quanta, which we now call photons, and whose energy is proportional to the frequency. So the main equation of Einstein's theory has this simple form. Nevertheless, despite its simplicity, it correctly describes all experimentally observes, observed uh, photoelectric effect. Uh, features. Finally, the third important part, important step of development of quantum mechanics was the Bohr's atomic model suggested in 1913. It resolved the apparent contradiction which existed in a reservoir picture of the atom uh, related with the uh, fact that electron in reservoir model moving around the nucleus should emit radiation as accelerating charge, as an accelerating charge, and therefore lose the energy and collapse to the nucleus. This is not the case. Atom, atoms are stable, at least stable isotopes, and <coughs> Bohr suggested that their emission corresponds to a very special process of changing uh, the electron between stationary orbits which each electron can occupy, and uh, each orbit corresponds to electron's angular momentum as an integral multiple of Planck constant. So there is also the lowest orbit closest to the nucleus, which is the ground state of the atom. The Bohr's theory allowed to explain many um, observable properties of atoms, in particular their spectral series of hydrogen, known as the Balmer series, uh, discovered in 1885 by Balmer, he was a school teacher and he made this discovery that he was 60 years old, by the way. Uh, and uh, it, it was a simple consequence of the energy quantization uh, in the Bohr theory. The energy of um, electrons levels <coughs> in Bohr's theory, uh, written here on the slide on the <coughs> lower left corner. I should say that despite many further developments, and the requirements, the basic points of the Bohr model remain valid till now, and this is the way how we think about atom uh, till, till the present moment. So, on the, by 1920s, uh, a lot of facts had been collected, and theoretical ideas, which clearly indicated that the classical description is uh, <coughs> not able to cover all the observable effects in the this domain of subatomic particles, and the new theory came in 1925. Uh, it is now known as quantum mechanics. It was created by many bright people. Besides Planck, Bohr, and Stein, you can see here Louis de Broglie, Werner Heisenberg, Erwin Schrödinger, Max Born, Paul Adel, and Moritz Dirac, uh, among the main creators. And since systematic Despite systematic presentation of quantum mechanics is not the aim of our course, uh, of course everybody is welcome to, to learn as much quantum mechanics uh, as you can. Anyway, it's very exciting intellectual 
the journey. But uh, fortunately for uh, for us, uh, an integral part of relativistic particle physics, in fact, can be understood without going into a subtle details of quantum mechanical behavior, and later we will explain why it is the case. So, uh, uh, here is a quiz. You can check yourself um, uh, trying to answer the questions written here, covering the materials we just were talking about. And with the red star, uh, you can see perhaps more complicated problems which require some computation with pen and pencil. And we will discuss them during the tutorial. That is the end of the first third of the first lecture.